Hey guys, Phil here, and I've just got a quick tip. If you're going to be using a real photo for your textures on a 3D model, uh, you'll want to get rid of some of the specularity that you may not even notice at a glance, but it is there and you don't want it on your texture. So I've got my friend Kristen here took some photos for me. And you now this stuff is totally normal. It's like anybody who's not wearing any makeup is going to be getting this kind of little specular highlights in here. And so first thing I'm gonna do, you know, she's she shot three pictures for me, but I'm just gonna focus on the front. And the first thing I'm gonna do is make a new layer on top of that. And I'm gonna set the blending mode to darken. And then I'm going to take the clone stamp tool and I'm going to set it to make sure that it's set to all layers. And I'm going to zoom in real close up here and I'm going to grab a little area right nearby. And if you're using your Wacom tablet, I'm going to make sure that you've got the transfer set to pen pressure so that you can just very gently get in there. And so I'm going to select an area near the specular highlight. So I'm going to just gently brush over top of it. And you can see that it really just makes it disappear, really. So I'll select one over here. I'll just gently brush over that. And make my brush a little smaller to get in here. And just brush that in. And it really works pretty well when you're doing this. And it doesn't take too long at all. But you do want to keep constantly selecting uh, new source points that are near the area. Uh, there we go. And see, even in this little spot right along here, uh, you'll want to get that too. So I'm going to select an area that's a uh, I don't have really have anything near that, but I can get something that's a similar shade down here. And then just gently brush over that. And that little bit of highlight goes away. And you're probably not going to use the uh, tear duct area very much, but hey, you can even get in there too if you want. And see, some of this stuff in the forehead is very light, and you may not even notice it. But it is there, so you, you do want to get rid of that. And it's surprising how much uh, it makes a big difference when you check it afterwards. So let's just clear that out. might end up getting some of these hairs in there so you might want to uh, clone those or you know, get rid of those first so you don't end up with little bits of hair all over the forehead <laughs> but this is real nice how it keeps the pores and all the texture while still getting rid of that highlight Pretty much takes care of that spot. I've got the other side of the face here. And you know, if you get an area that's too dark, uh, you know, keep an eye out for that because you might end up with some weird blotch on the skin. So just make sure you undo and get rid of anything that goes overboard. Just want to keep the strokes real light. Okay, let's make a smaller brush. Get this in here. And even in here. And if we get to the sides, and if you want to, you can get the inside of the ear in here. Here's a little bit on her chin. Get a nice large brush and take care of it real quick. Okay.
And the great part about this is that you're painting it all on one layer. So if you want, you can always check to see how it looks before and after just by hiding that layer. You can see what a, a surprising difference it makes. Okay, so that's my quick Photoshop tip for um, adjusting the, getting rid of the specularity if you're going to use real photos for your textures. Hope you liked my video, and if you did, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe, and be sure to comment underneath. Bye.